Yep. Hi, my name is Kevin from Moonlight Mantids, and I just want to make a really quick video. I know I always say that my videos aren't really that short, but um, I want to let you know that the uh, Cyphidromantis lineola did hatch, the one I just made the video about, the really, really big one, and it was a record breaker. I actually just spent the last day and a half, 30 hours, separating, feeding nymphs, making nymph cups, something I do, I do something a little differently, and I'll show you. They're all right here behind me, and um, I just got done separating, feeding, watering, along with all the other nymphs I already had, and working on all the other projects and insects that I work with, and uh, even some of the reptiles that I work with, and it's just a lot of work. Um, just wanted to do a quick video to give you an example of what it looks like. This this right here, and I'm going to tell you, this was the one hatch uh, from the Cyphidromantis lineola, and it was a record breaker at 356 nymphs. Okay, every last one of them is right here. I even counted the die off. I think there were uh, the ones stuck in their worm skin, and so there was about a dozen or so that didn't make it that uh, right away were deformed and uh, were culled right away, which means I put them in a freezer. Culled is like when you're producing stuff, you know, um, and uh, you, you get rid of it because there's no use for it, it has deformity, so you cull them. It's killing them, but you, you cull them, so you put them in the fridge, freezer, um, and then they'll die almost within just five or ten minutes and uh, if they have deformities which is something I do for quality I go ahead and I you know destroy them because it's it's more humane than them starving to death or drying out or dying of dehydration which are all horrible horrible things same thing if you can't take care of them instead of letting them starve or even it's probably even better than letting them rip each other apart and damaging each other just cull the ones you don't use okay keep enough to breed for yourself if you're gonna breed them uh, give some to your friends do not release non-native mantids outside. Don't, don't do it. I don't care if you have a greenhouse or whatever. Don't put non-natives outside. It's, it's not a good idea. We are a really small community. And right now, key, right now, control is key. And we, there aren't many rules at all on insects as pets. But uh, these not being non-plant pest species, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a newer hobby and uh, they are safe to have and to own, but we need to be responsible off the gate. So anyway, um, a little bit more like uh, about what I do, uh, if you're unfamiliar with Moonlight Mantids. reason I named it Moonlight Mantids five years ago, six years ago, 2000, I don't, I don't even, I can't even remember. Um, the reason I named it Moonlight Mantids, because I moonlight breeding mantids. So Moonlight Mantids, I'm moonlighting and doing this, because it literally takes me all night, most days, to take care of these things, because I feed my nymphs especially when they're L1s, L2s, every two days. Sometimes, sometimes I get away with every three days, but there are consequences. Every other day till they're an L2, then maybe every three days. As they get larger, you can feed them more, and they can go a little bit longer without eating, but right away you want to give them a lot of care and attention. Right here, these are all the ones from one single hatch. And I, I'm just, you know, people are like, oh, I want to breed mantids, I want to breed mantids. Some people drive themselves crazy trying to take care of these because they love them so much you are gonna run yourself ragged keep what you need keep what or sell what you can uh, get rid of or give them away do what you gotta do don't put them outside I moonlight in mantids uh, that's uh, that's what I do and in order to make um, to help our community I'm giving you guys as much advice as, I, as I've gotten and also that I know is is valuable advice and I'm letting you know early on before you think about breeding, think about all this, these tanks, everything, this tub. This is just a little bit of it, and it's towering over me. And uh, it, it does take all night. It's a lot of work, but it can also be extremely rewarding. Um, I don't regret any of it. There aren't days where I go, oh, I want to get rid of everything. I don't, I don't, I would never do that. Um, I just kind of go at a pace that I think I can keep up with depending on what I'm doing currently. Right now, I'm spending a lot of time at home, um, besides school and work. And uh, when I'm, when you know, when I need to get away from all my other, you know, priorities, I like to just play with my insects. And that's why the collection got so big. It's just that's what I do in my free time. I don't do anything else in my free time. This is what I do. Um, so, just a quick video. Record-breaking ooth, Cyphidromantis lineola, giant African mantis, biggest ooth I've ever seen in my life. And um, hatch 356, counting the dozen deformities that I had to call. All of them separated individually. 
and um, I'll be feeding these every two days. Now they are already posted at www.moonlightmantids.com. If you're interested, please um, go ahead and uh, you know order yourself some. They're pretty cheap, and uh, I'll send you the supplies you need with it. Also, there are a lot of other great breeders out there. Make sure you shop around and get a species you like. This is a good beginner species, and I think a lot of people would, would agree with that. Um, also, please like and subscribe. Um, I guess that's it. I'm pretty tired, and I need to go to bed, so uh, bye.